<clears throat> All right. Um, looks like we're starting. So. All right. So it looks like we've got candy. And one fish, two fish. So hello, candy and Elizabeth. Uh, welcome to the stream. So and uh, not Nola Jane, fish rich is here as well. So welcome. So, are you guys able to see me, or uh, uh, is it still loading on your end? Yes, we're still waiting. Um, I hit the... Waiting, why is it waiting? Alright. It says receiving my content. Must be waiting in a moment. Alright. All right, you guys see it now? Uh, it didn't give me anything now. So I don't see the... It says green. So I put the encoder in. Candy says to push the other button. Let's see. Let's try this again. Okay. Try this again. No, show no. Nah. Of course it does. All right, cool. Looks like we're live. So. All right, uh, so let's see who we've got in the chat. Uh, I've got Derek here. Uh, Candy is here. Uh, we got Palmer's here. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, we've got uh, not Nola Jane Fish Rich, and I think, and I've got uh, Elizabeth One Fish Two Fish. So, welcome everybody. Uh, let's wait a couple more minutes here to see uh, who else comes in. And we'll get on with the uh, Vinovsky tank is here, and Dan Slee is here as well. So uh, looks like we've got 11, uh, 11 here. Uh, Jason Brady is here as well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started with the show. So kind of thought today uh, we'd go through a little bit of kind of like uh, the past in the hobby. So basically... Um, uh, I've seen some things on YouTube about, you know, getting back to your roots, you know, stuff like that. And so I kind of want to just go through some pictures with you guys and kind of show you some of the early days of the hobby. Um, hello, Pam. Uh, welcome to the stream. So so with that being said, um, I put together, it's almost kind of like a slideshow. And then I'm just going to go ahead and talk um, as we go through uh, the pictures. So, so let's go ahead and... Uh, get started so all right so this is the first shot here is uh, one of my old tanks uh, I used to have a 180 gallon reef tank and these fish were uh, part of that there's a uh, Royal Grama uh, the uh, a blue tang in there uh, the regal tang uh, green chromis and uh, a purple tang. And if you look at the purple tang um, on, on the side, 
Um, he's got the HLLE, unfortunately, which was kind of uh, an unfortunate thing. So uh, the one thing I haven't figured out uh, with this software yet is how to get the, the pointer so that I can actually point at it. Oh, and now we're on to the next picture. So this is an amphipod. Um, when you, you see, in the old days, you used to get like real ocean live rock, and sometimes you get some interesting things on the on the live rock. So this amphipod uh, was one of the wonderful things that showed up uh, in my tank. From my understanding, he was harmless. Uh, I think he got eaten after a while. Uh, I maybe should have caught him and kept him. So uh, he's kind of a kind of an interesting critter. Um, the, and I actually had a lot of fun kind of going through uh, a lot of this and seeing, uh, you know, some of the old pictures and old fish rooms and stuff like that. So, so I thought I'd put this in there. Um, this is a pretty unique picture. Not a lot of people have seen it. So, all right. So, I tried to time this out in a reasonable manner. So... Let me see if I can forward this on to the next one. No, nope, that does not do that. All right, so, you know, you get the live rock in there. Do you guys have any questions so far? Um, what do you guys think of this uh, this critter? Hey, uh, Lumpy Dog's here. Hey, welcome, uh, Lumpy Dog. Uh, we're just going through some of the old pictures in the uh, fish room, and you came at a very interesting time because uh, you came in uh, with this amphipod... Um, coming through here and uh yeah it's a saltwater roly-poly that is exactly what that is uh maple streets here uh welcome brandon fish tropic is here uh so yeah so this is a uh amphipod from the we you know i put this on um, a forum all right so now we are on to another tank which is one of my favorites so this was the 245 gallon uh saltwater tank that I had uh, when I first got the 245 and in here and one of my goals is actually is almost to recreate this tank in a way so on here is an emperor angelfish at the top and at the bottom is a uh, blue face angel so a lot of people um, probably there's still a lot of people out there um, saltwater wise with the internet lore you know, I was like, oh, you can't put two angelfish together and, you know, it'll be a death tornado and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's one of, like, the, the uh, internet lore things in saltwater. So, uh, one of my sort of, like, mentors back in the day really uh, did the same thing. Not these two fish, but uh, very similar. So, yeah, so uh, Lumpy Dog, salt in the water. That's crazy talk. Yeah, so Lumpy Dog, I think you missed, I think you were you were gone, but uh, yeah, so my actual, like, sort of, you know, we were talking about roots for a minute earlier, and like, my roots are in saltwater, so I started the hobby, actually, in saltwater, so, uh, so I took a very different path than a lot of people, um, so I did saltwater, and then I did a whole bunch of, and then I started doing, uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, Terry, that's an excellent, that's excellent. So, uh, yeah, Mabel, it's amazing what you can do that the internet tells you you can't. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely for sure. Um, so, yeah, so now it's more common. I mean, people keep multiple species together. So, uh, this was another uh, piece of the 180 uh, that I kind of showed you a little bit of earlier. So, um, I have kept corals before. So there's some zoanthids in here. Uh, this is a very old picture. Uh, this was probably 2009, 2010 or so. But uh, if you look, um, the big coral that's in the middle, the green one's the plate coral. Uh, it's a monopora. And then uh, there's some other stuff in here. Uh, there's a there was a purple monopora too. Uh, yep, I did run sumps. So. Yeah, so I did run sumps. I don't have... There are some pictures coming up of some of the sumps. Um, and then there's some uh, SPS in here as well. I think this was a... Uh, this was the coral that was the bane of my existence. There's a little green one sticking up. You can see in the very bad picture here. 
So, um, it's called the Green Slimer. And it was supposed to be like the easiest SPS coral you can take, you can keep. Like I could keep bird's nests and stuff like that. Um, Long Island fish guys here, welcome. Uh, that purple rock looks great. So, so yeah. So someday I might. Uh, yeah, this. Yeah, this is not the best picture. So, so Dan Slee is uh, rolling and laughing. So okay, so here's uh, here's the sump picture. So uh, this is kind of like the first clownfish breeding setup I set up that I did, and sort of changed the design on this a little bit. So in the front, um, like the prevailing thought was to put the bulkhead in the front, which I hated, or I, I grew to hate after a while. So the idea is you can take the tank down and move it and do all those things and just I decided that I didn't like it and so I like it um, so uh, now that's a sump for Dan Slee so uh, Elizabeth here um, hey everyone yeah so that's um, uh, um, you know I was trying to think if I still had that Rubbermaid tub or not I actually might still have that as like I think it's like in my has like pool parts in it now but I do have that that sump so so yeah that was a uh, so that was the first clownfish breeding setup um, so this is kind of starting to get towards a lot of what the fish barn is yeah she was there and my connection was getting cranky it was fixed uh, yep that sump is the uh, it's the same kind of similar one here uh, those are the um, Rubbermaid totes. So those are uh, those are one of my favorites. Um, I've kind of grown to a little bit smaller ones now. Um, I use a lot of sumps. I use now are the uh, like the tough black uh, uh, ones at Home Depot. So I've run in quite a few of those now in here. So a lot of the bigger fish that it won't whose fry it won't go through the overflows and stuff and end up in every tank I have. Um, I've been kind of doing those as sumps and connected systems. Um, it's just easier to heat, filter, and do all that if it's into one system. But stuff like guppies I run as separate tanks just because they're... Like, otherwise you'll have guppies in 18 different tanks. So, so this is uh, another piece of this. Um, this would be, you know, because a calcium reactor way in the corner. Uh, this is still at our old house. Um, HC Aqua's here. Uh, Terry's, dang, that's a skimmer. Yes, I wish I still had this skimmer. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it was kind of a power hog, but it's an uh, ASM G6. Um, so, so that is a um, that was one of my favorites. Uh, you know, you try to clean stuff up and you get rid of stuff, and then you regret it later. That was one of them. But yeah, that skimmer was a beast. All right, so this is kind of the same area now, a little bit built, more built out. So this is the uh, that kind of the clownfish breeding setup. You know, and, you, and my fish room is still uses this kind of system today, where it's got the got the plumbing here. But it's now a lot of this is auto water change. Uh, JH Aquatics is here. Uh, welcome, Joseph. So uh, Aquarium Cop is here as well. So uh, thank you guys all for coming out. So we've got this all, you know. Yep, everything's going well, uh, JH. Uh, so uh, we're just walking through some old pictures, um, kind of going back down memory lane a little bit. So uh, there was some talk, you know, in some of the other, you know, YouTube videos and stuff about roots. So I kind of thought about, hey, let's go pull up some pictures and kind of show you, you know, some of my past and some of the old fish moves and stuff that I've had um, in the aquarium hobby. So this is all saltwater stuff. So you're gonna see. Very little fresh water in this in this video, unfortunately, because this is all like the the past. So it's gonna be a lot of clownfish breeding and stuff like that. And I th think I kept them in here, but there's some old barn pic, some pictures of when we first moved in here of the barn too. So I wish there was a way I can move the video along, but this is uh, yeah. So this is one of the uh, you know one of the buildings here of the uh, clownfish breeding setup. So, 
Alright, kind of waiting for the video now. So, do you guys have any, any questions? Um, any comments? Uh, what do you feed newly, clashed, uh, newly hatched clownfish fry? Uh, you feed them rotifers, um, and then you can take them into baby brine shrimp, or uh, there's something called TDO Otohime, which it comes in A, B, C, D, and E. Alright, so this is the next one. So, this one is, uh, there's a story behind this one. So, this is um, in the basement. So, the first video I made was the, um, on the YouTube channel that was serious, that wasn't for a forum, was the, uh, uh, was the old fish room. So, this was the start of the old fish room, which took many different forms throughout the years. Uh, hello, Daryl, how's it going? So, this was built in one day. So, when we moved, we kind of had one day to, to take care of the fish. Uh, much like Corey said, you know, you got to do it. You got to set aside a day, two days. So, I had, you know, something similar to the setup you had seen in the prior pictures. Um, so, HC, I'll get to your question in just a second. Um, so, basically, we moved it. I moved it in one day. Um, literally had... Um, got done at 3 o'clock in the morning and built this janky looking setup here. And so um, so this is what happens when you do something in one day. Um, it was a, kind of a disaster. Like I had clownfish in with wrong clownfish. And you know some of them got killed overnight. And it was just a mess. But that is the... Uh, um, that is the, you know, the first set of the fish room here. Uh, those, yeah, the bricks are janky for sure. Um, this actually got put in somebody's magna talk as well. So he took, a, you know, uh, Matt Pedersen did a magna talk many years ago about building a fish room. And he had these in there, and I was sitting in there and cringing. Um, this is kind of the next evolution of that fish room. So this is, um, these, uh, the tanks with the blue background are like the worst purchase I've ever made. And this was actually buying that rack. And I didn't think about that till uh, till we got there, or till like just now. But that was like my first um, really exposure to the. Hey TM Aquatics, how are you? That was my first exposure to the hobby. And if you notice, you can't really tell in the picture. Um, PVC everywhere. Yes, the fish barn has PVC everywhere too. If you if you come in here, it's um, someone used the term one time. The uh, Cathedral of PVC or something like that to subscribe somebody's fish room. So, yeah, so basically, um, the guy who I bought this from was a cichlid breeder. And this was long before I'd ever done freshwater. So I drive out to his house, you know, he's, you know, in the freshwater ho or the saltwater hobby, there aren't really awards. You know, there's not the breeder, you know, there is one breeder award program that we will talk about on this. Uh, uh, on this, call, call it a show, I guess. Um, it's called the, and we're actually wearing the shirt today, it's the MBI. But, uh, yeah, so he was talking about his cichlid awards and everything. Um, he, he tried breeding clownfish and didn't work out for him too well. So, um, it was kind of a uh, interesting conversation. But, uh, I kind of was my first, you know, and he was telling me about all, all the awards he won with his cichlids and how great they were, and it was really an interesting so, it was a very fun, uh, it's like my first exposure to it. Um, so, alright, so this is the, got, sorry HG, I am going to get to your question. These are actually going a little quicker now. Uh, so this is the, you know, further evolving the fish room. This is the 245 um, that currently is in the fish barn. Uh, it's now walled in. No, um... Yeah, lumpy dog for sure. So I'm going to answer HC's Aqua's question because I don't want to get too far gone. Um, so basically, for clown to get rotifers, um, you can either go to. Um, I don't have a video per se. Um, there is some in the clownfish breeding videos. There are some rotifers there. Uh, some rotifer videos there. Uh, so Troy Hansen is here. Um, so he's going to retire in ten years and devote time to a fish room. 
Um, just, yeah, I have two kids, a job, and, you know, everything else, and I just kind of make time, I guess. But so this is, um, so basically, uh, Jay, it's congrats on 300 subs. Yes, thank you very much. And thank all of you for the support as well. So back to Rota for, so, so there's not a Rota for video, so I guess I should make one. Uh, but what you would need to do is you need to go to um, Reed Mariculture is probably the best place to get them from. Uh, there's some other places too, like Florida Aqua Farms. Uh, you can get them from uh, Fosters and Smith as well. Uh, so what you do is you get a bucket of salt water. Uh, and you need to get algae, which you can get from Reed Mariculture as well. Um, it's called RG Complete. And so you can go ahead and you uh, basically, you bo you uh, not boil it, but you you know put an air stone in it. And then uh, there is some maintenance to it. You have to go... Uh, um, You've got to go ahead and uh, basically strain them out every so often. I need to do it again, too. Uh, my rotor for culture is getting kind of nasty. Um, so this is another evolution of it as well, uh, kind of the back of that system. So uh, another, you know, this is a sump. This is like a 220 gallon that I got for free from somebody. So Rob Myers is here. Uh, welcome to the show. I need to get a drink. So fish cropping, I swear I was sub to you, LOL. Yeah, I think YouTube just drops people sometimes. So, yeah, so this is uh, another evolution of that. Um, I think these are, I think these are 10 gallons. Um, like, I hate 10 gallon tanks. So I should like probably do a stream one day on like all the tanks, I kind of tanks I hate. Um, I hate 10 gallons because you can't drill them. Um, I'll tell you guys a little bit of a story. Um, if you guys know what uniseals are, they're like the seals that you use to do uh, plastic um, plastic buckets. But uh, there's a guy um, that we know, he did... Um, what was it? Oh, he did... Uh, Oh, so we're back to the beginning. So this is that one eight. This is kind of a more advanced version of that one eighty. And I'll get back to the story in just a minute. So this is you know that tank sort of starting to grow out a little bit. I don't think I ever had a picture of it at its prime though. Um, that green plate, that green uh, monopora coral at one point was about. Let me get on camera here. It was about like that, but dinner plate size. So uh, that was a. Uh, how I'll put it. That was a very. Uh, I do miss this tank. In a way, I don't because it was a lot of it was a lot of work too. Um, I, I'm still debating whether I want to set up a, a reef tank or not. Um, I may do that. So, um, yes, yeah, you were impressed me. Shout out to Greg and Mike. Yes, thank you, Fish Tropic for sure. So. So good. It sounds like you guys are subbing up to each other. So that's good to you know keep everyone uh, support everyone out there because this is uh, you know it's kind of funny you go out there and it's like you know you don't see what goes on behind it until you do it yourself. Uh, you know, like putting together a YouTube video. You know, putting together like a live stream. I mean, this didn't take long. So that was the end of the video. So um, if we want to watch it again, we can. Or um, if you guys want to just uh, ask some questions, we can do that too. Uh, so we've got 25 here. So thank you guys uh, for sure for uh, coming out. I think that's a record. So we can walk through these again if you want. Some of you didn't see the beginning. So uh, this is one of the... Uh, so hello, Small Fry Aquariums. Yes, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, so this is uh, some of the fish here. This is a purple tang. All right, so we're so somebody got re, did replay, so we're gonna replay it. So, uh, so yeah, so this is uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the saltwater tanks, and then there's the amphipod, which I think a lot of people came in uh, when the amphipod was on. So uh, it's a pretty wild looking uh, creature there. So 
Uh, yeah, so I so when you used to get live rock, you used to actually get real like ocean uh, live rock, and so this thing would come out. You know, you'd get things that would come out occasionally, critters, and um, I think there's there's some like goofy kind of worms and too and stuff too. But yeah, so this thing just kind of came rolling out one day. Um, he was around for a while. I don't know what happened to him. But uh, yeah, so that was. Uh, I forgot I had this picture until I was going through him. But uh, yes, yeah, so he's an amphipod of some sort. So um, Island Queen, uh, what? Oh my God, what is that? So that is an amphipod of some sort. Um, and he was a good inch long or so. So he was not small. He wasn't like a he wasn't like a copepod. He was a decent sized thing. So I don't know where he came from or how he got there, but uh, something that you never, I never seen anything like it again. So I was glad I was able to get a picture of it, as bad as it was. Yeah. So Katie. Yeah. Oh, he was big. So, so yeah, he was. Uh, no, he was a decent size for sure. Uh, he was. Uh, he was kind of angelfish food, actually. I think an angelfish would might might have eaten him. But uh, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. He was he was pretty wild. I should have like kept him like. Yeah, so hey, you gotta support people. Yeah, I fish tropic. I 100% agree. So, um, I think that's how our advancements are made in the hobby is uh, people not doing it right. So, um, one thing I could recommend if you guys are um, ever, I guess, interested is go. Um, there's a talk uh, from this year's Macna by uh, Matt Pedersen. Um, who talked about the uh, cor coralivore butterfly fish? They're like the ones that no one should keep, and so he's working on keeping them. And it's pretty cool stuff. Um, Derek, how are the new fish doing? Uh, new fish are doing good. So uh, Derek uh, and I met up at a uh, something called Fishy Bingo. Uh, it was done by the uh, Michigan Cichlid Association, and um, I'm gonna go play bingo again on Thursday night with the Motor City Aquarium Society. And I think Derek's gonna go as well. So basically what you did is I brought um, two bags of purple ACI fry that you saw in last uh, last Sunday's video. And so you can bring some bags of fish, get a uh, get a bingo card, and if you got a bingo you went and got a bag of fish. So I came back with some new fish um, working on the unboxing video. Uh, but I think I am going to combine it with the other fishy bingo video or the other fishy bingo and what fish come from that. So, but yeah, all the fish are doing good. Motor City, yeah, Lumpy Dog. I am in, uh, I am in Auburn Hills. So I think you are by me. I think you're, um, I think you're a town or two over from me. So, so yeah. So I am uh, in the shadow of the uh, Chrysler Building, basically. So, so yeah. So I'm gonna go. Um, actually, I'm gonna join the Motor City Aquarium Society. I'm a member. Um, the, I'm the treasurer of the um, Saltwater Club here in the Detroit area, but uh, but yeah, so I'm uh, but you know this, this I'm just gonna be a member, so I don't want to get involved in the board stuff. I got enough going on. I don't need to. I didn't need, I need to find trouble. Yeah, so yeah, Lumpy Dog's pretty close to me, so he's probably about 15, 20 minutes away from me. Um, so, yeah, so this has been a lot of fun. This has been a good one. So, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to bring. I don't know if I'm going to bring some more of those cichlids or if I'm going to keep those, um, keep those cichlids for, uh, like an auction or something. So, uh, Mob Guppy's here. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? So, we're just kind of running through some pictures of the old, uh, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, Derek's close to us too, Lumpy Dog. So we're just kind of running through some of my old pictures from uh, back in the day. Kind of thought it'd be kind of a fun, uh, kind of a fun thing to kind of just go through. You know, just pull up the old pictures and do kind of a slideshow. You know, of where, you know, where you've been in the hobby and kind of what, uh, you know, what your roots are, etc. So. 
Yeah, so I'm um, going to do some... Uh, how big was that tank? That tank was a 180. Um, and I wish I would have kept it. I had a small leak and I got rid of it. And I regret it because I probably could have fixed it. So, you know, we were talking about the big protein skimmer uh, a while back. And, you know, how you regret getting rid of equipment. Well, that's one of them. So, for sure. Um, Pam, you made me laugh on Facebook today. Uh, that's cool. I'll have to, you know, if it's public, I'll see if find it. Facebook's an interesting place, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of tanks I wish I, you know, a lot of these tanks that I front drilled I got rid of. Um, yeah, this is a different skimmer. Um, I had two huge skimmers at one point. And... The other one, um, the one I have now, and it's not even set up yet. It's still down in my basement. Like, it's it's like, it's a um, Octopus um, 600, I think it is. Uh, it's a pretty good size skimmer, too. It was, uh, but I've got to, uh, oh, Pam's doing water changes. So we should, we should live stream, we should live stream Pam since uh, Jeffro isn't doing his water changes anymore. Um, I do auto water chain, so I am not a good candidate because it would be pretty boring. So there's the massive skimmer right there. So that is the ASM G6, which I think is still around. I think you can still buy it. It's not... Oh, Pam will be live later. Yeah, see, the problem is that, you know, you guys on the West Coast, it's like, it gets pretty late for me uh, uh, once you guys get on the West Coast. So... But yeah, so that is the massive skimmer. Um, it's the ASM G6. So if I ever found one again, I might get it. And you know, the only problem though is it took three like power hog pumps to run it. So it was kind of a I don't know. It was kind of a power disaster, I guess you want to call it. I know my past my but yeah, I know it is. So yes, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so we, we can update some current stuff. So like Derek said, I did get some new fish um, on, on Saturday. Um, so we're going to unbox those. Um, it was the Michigan Cichlid Association. So that was a lot of fun. So we got 28 now. So we, uh, for sure, we're, uh, thank you guys all for coming. So this, um, for those of you who've joined, uh, we're kind of just going through some of the old pictures uh, from my past. Kind of looking at like some of my roots and kind of just having a slideshow uh, what's going on here. So this again is uh, kind of the beginning of my clownfish breeding setups. Just been kind of playing around with it. Um, what made me go from saltwater to freshwater? That's a good question, Candy. Um, honestly, it's, it was watching YouTube. So, and I will say... You know, freshwater kind of got me back engaged more in the hobby. So kind of what happened here, you know, I was getting bored with, you know, the fish room and kind of everything like that. And really just, I started playing around a little bit, um, started getting some guppies, you know, kind of like watching Corey, you know, I watched Joey for a while, you know, found Joel. And so um, really did a lot of... Um, started kind of going down that road and you know some of the equipment I have like one of the days we'll talk about uh, one of the things I want to talk about on the, the live stream here is the Neptune Apex and like I'll do some screen shares and show you some things like you know I can shut the lights off behind you you know I can go on the computer here and shut the lights on and off and do kind of stuff like that but it really I, just kind of happened you know, I kind of started playing around with it Kind of explored it more, you know. And it was kind of, you know, and one thing too is I, I kind of was trying to get my kids into doing it at the time. And so I think I've told this story before, uh, but I gave my kids the Live Aquaria catalog. And they were basic, you know, I said, pick something you want. And uh, they picked discus. So that's um, the genesis of the, uh, that's the genesis of the, uh, the tank. Um, so that was the genesis of kind of the, the, the hobby of me doing freshwater. And then I kind of, you know, 
you know, kind of with my, my, my saltwater experiences, I thought I could bring a very different um, aspect to it. Because um, there's some things I use in here, like the, the Neptune Apex that a lot of people don't use. So they're very, uh, it's a different, uh, it's a different method. Like for auto water change, I have the Apex set up to do it. To, it's almost the same as the sprinkler system, basically. Um, so that's cool. What would you, what, what have I done different? Um, I honestly, the, the one thing I wish I could do better and in, in any of these fish rooms was like for whatever reason I have to get this stuff in in the actual place and have it running and then decide to change it I wish I could be one of those people that could actually like lay out the plan in my head like I always have a plan in my head and it like doesn't come out that way you know so, so now you know the fish barn um, there's gonna be a video coming out pretty soon uh, about some of the changes in the fish barn uh, we saw some, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of it. Sorry, on last week's live stream, where I was basically, you know, we built the island, uh, finished up back here. So that's the one thing I wish I could do different. Um, and I guess the one thing I could do different um, as well, you know, it, it, but it's all learning. And I think some of the other live streams have been, you know, you need to fail in order to get better. I mean, the what picture? The pictures. Uh, can't talk now. Uh, the one picture that I don't have in here is um, this is actually Fish Barn 2.0. Uh, back when we bought this house in um, 2011, so I think it was like 2012, 13 or so, um, I tried Fish Barn 1.0 and it was a absolute disaster. So it, like February, um, I had to go out and like rescue the fish and do all this stuff and it was just a mess. So it was just kind of a have I ever kept Molly's in full salt? No, I have never done the conversion. Um, yeah, there is no such thing as a perfect fish keeper, for sure. Um, everyone's failed. Even, like, the you know, the guys who are breeding the, the saltwater angelfish now and all, you know, and all of that stuff. Those guys fail. You know, they've killed thousands of fish. But that's part of, of kind of, like, learning the hobby, I think. But, yeah, I mean, I think... You have to, I think it was Corey who said it, but I mean, people have to fail. That's how you learn. Like, you know, you can listen to YouTube and you can go and read the forums and do all of that. But until you actually do it yourself, you don't have an appreciation for it. And that goes for YouTube too. Like you can sit there like, oh, I can get on a, on a camera and talk and do all of that stuff. But until you do it, um, it's really, you really just can't, you can't appreciate it. So, this is a great group of people. Yes, um, the community in general is a great group of people. Um, you know, the fish fam and, you know, whatever else. Um, that's life. You learn the most. Yes, for sure. And for, uh, so, yeah. So, that system is so cool. Yeah, so that is a, um, basically a clownfish breeding setup. You know, that's, um, that's the way, like, if you read the book to run it. But I hate having the pipe in the front. That drives me insane. Like, I want to see my fish, and so I put mine in the back and don't really, and just deal with it that way. So, so yeah, I mean, it's just, you just got to learn. I mean, you know, you've got to, like, you know, try to heat a barn with a pellet heater and have it go to, to pardon my French, hell in a handbasket, and have to do, like, a midnight rescue mission um, in the middle of February to realize that, you know, you need to do something better. So I think that failure made this building a lot better. Now, um, you know, the one thing I did wish I had out here was gas heat because the electric bill was a little steep, but, uh, it is what it is. And, you know, <clears throat> so yeah, that system was, co was cool. Um, uh, see me, I just simple sponges filtered with an auto. Water. Yeah. You know what? Fish Tropic, that is the best way to do it. Um, yeah, the tank in the wall is cool. Um, the hardest part about the tank in the wall is getting the front access. Because if you don't have the front access, it becomes a real pain in the neck to, to deal with. Um, this was almost kind of a fake tank in the wall. Cause I kind of built the, the wall around the tank. Um, but yeah, so... 
Yeah, I mean, you can use sponge filters in salt water, too. I mean, a lot of people don't. I mean, my clownfish uh, breeding setup has uh, has uh, sponges in it. So, um, and I am running um, the Ziz filter in one of them with uh, saltwater biomedia. So, um, that's something that's gotta, that I've got to do, too, is another uh, Ziz filter video. So, that is a... Uh, been, I've had some interesting results with uh, running the uh, biomedia. But yeah, so this was uh, the first you know, many versions of this, uh, of the uh, fish only tank. So this is kind of where I got kind of away from doing the reef tanks is after we moved here. Um, like I said, I've done them. I can do them. It's just I kind of moved on from it, I guess. Uh, but I, I am thinking about doing it again. I mean, that's kind of the thing, you know, like you know, you meet some people, and there aren't a lot of, like, fish saltwater people. Um, it's kind of dominated by reefs. Um, does salt affect the sponge at all? No, not really. Um, I think I do have to clean them a little bit more because they do get some cyanol uh, bacteria on them. I mean, they're breeding systems, so they are what they are. But, uh, yeah, no, the sponges uh, work fine. Uh, probably eat away. Yeah, I buy the um, Swiss Tropical sponges, and those seem to be pretty good. Um, the 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 other ones get kind of junked up. I don't like the uh, just the gray ones. Um, you know, one thing I do like too, and I'm not. Let me see if I got it sitting here. I might not. I think it's downstairs. But um, they that sponge that Corey sells. What is your record for the most fry you were raising simultaneously? It's not many, actually, Elizabeth. Um, the clownfish fried... Um, um, not many. I mean, probably now, because there's a lot of, like, just random fry in here that, um, like, a lot of the freshwater fish, I've just let them colony breed. Um, so, like, the last video I did on um, my cichlid colony breeding... I just let them do that, and so this is probably the most now. Um, there's guppy, there's four tanks of guppy fry. There are um, random endlers and everything else. Um, have you ever tried to hang on the glass dual filter? Um, I have not tried that. Um, that's not something I've tried. Um, yeah, like I said, and actually, um, I have something coming in the, in the mail. I bought some, uh, uh, some of the taller, um, Swiss Tropical filters, too, for the goldfish tank and for the, um, uh, for the 150-gallon plywood tank because I, I want to use a hang-on back, but, uh, the, the plywood tank's too wide, and so the hang-on back doesn't work. So, kind of annoyed with that. So, um, do I keep fish because of a passion or has it become a lifestyle? Um, I'll put it to you this way. Um, I can't imagine not having fish anymore. Like there was a period, um, where I went through, you know, everyone goes through that, their periods in the, in the hobby. And... Uh, there was a small period where I didn't have fish, and it drove me nuts. So, uh, it's just something that's always been there. And so, like, something's missing if it's not. That's the best way I'll put it. Um, you know, this is out of control, but it's kind of... Ever since I bought this house, it's been kind of a, a, a dream. Uh, Skipper's Aquarium is here. Hi, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. So... So yeah, it's just kind of like, it's part of what I am, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, I saw an interesting post on one of the uh, Facebook uh, forums where they were talking about a, uh, someone went to the fish store and they'd left without buying anything. And I think that's a sign, and I even commented on that thread, um, that's a sign where basically you, um, you've evolved in the hobby to where like you become more selective, I guess you want to call it. 
where you know you know what you want, you know what you're looking for, and if it's not there, then you don't get it. And, that, and I'm that way with salt water. Like that's one of the things that's hard for me for salt water. Like I've been to salt water stores for God knows how long, and it's like I go in there and it's like okay, there's more regal. Like it takes a lot to like make me stop and say, oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna buy that. You know, there's a store around here that I, I go to. Um, it's uh, I don't know how I want to describe it. But um, I go to it, and, you know, a lot of times it's the same stuff. But occasionally he'll have something uh, out of the blue that will surprise you. But um, that's, that's where I used to live. I used to live uh, more towards the east, of towards the lake. And um, that area is like a fish store, like, haven. Like, I literally, you can literally go to, like, three different fish stores within ten minutes of each other. And it's kind of an interesting thing that they all survive. Uh, you found some fry for my leopard longfin Daniels. Cool, that's something I've not done. So uh, definitely congratulations. Um, it's kind of funny though. One thing I'll, I'll talk about too, I guess, is when I came from, like, salt, you know, coming from salt water, like Plecos. Like, I had a, like, a a thing with Plecos. Like, I had a, you know, well, at one point I had, like, a 29-gallon tank. You know, I had the common Pleco. It got huge. And it was just nasty. Like, it died. It was, like, the nastiest thing ever. And so I had this thing. It's like, I'm not getting plecos. What's the... And then I finally saw some decent-looking plecos. And I'm like, those are kind of cool. Maybe uh, maybe I should learn a little bit more about them. So, in one way, though, you know, I'm going to go back to the fishy bingo for just a second. One thing that was interesting about that, and um, if Derek's still here, um, there's a little bit of a story, too, uh, from the fishy bingo, was that if you don't know what the fish are, like... Like, saltwater is pretty easy, I think, to figure out what the fish are and what they do. Because there's not, you know, they don't use a lot of species names and stuff like that. You know, a lot of them you can kind of understand, you know, you know what the tangs are, you know, and they're different body shapes. And you can kind of tell which ones go with which. It's not as much, It's I just think it's easier. This is, you know, my opinion. But if you go, um... But, like, going to this cichlid bingo, like, especially towards the end, there was, you know, you were kind of stuck with whatever bag was there. And um, Derek's um, significant other, I think his fiance, grabbed um, a feste. And um, and so she grabbed, the, you know, the feste. And it's like, and I'm like, you don't want that. You know, I've, I'm not a monster fish guy, but I, I kind of, you know, I've watched Brian's Aquariums, you know, um, IFG, you know, you see, you know, the feste is like this big, right? And I was like, you don't want that. So, like, if you don't know the species names, you kind of get in trouble because if you don't, you know, you can end up with something that gets like eight feet long. So, there was a lot of pho pulling out your phone and figuring out, you know, what the fish are. And I'm still not good with the cichlids. Like, the, like, like, I can't walk up to a cichlid, like, a, and like, know, like, oh, you know, obviously, like, the peacocks and, and you know, the ambunas and stuff like that, I, I kind of know. But, like, you know, some of the, you know, you get into the haps and some of the other stuff, it's like, it's, it's, I'm just like, um, what is this and, you know, what does it do? Like, you know, it's going to get, like, a, you know, turn into the size of, like, a bluegill or, or a bass or something. Yeah, the fishy bingo was cool. So, yeah, the fresh, I've kind of come to learn, um, that the freshwater community over here in Michigan is pretty strong. Um, you've heard Jeremy talk a lot about the uh, Grand Rapids area. And, um, yeah, so he was talking about his auction, and they had a 1,000 bags. Um, we had, I think, here they had a 1,000 bags, too. I went to the auction, and it was and it was an all-day thing. You know, you sat, you know. So, uh, yeah, the fishy bingo was a lot of fun. It's a dangerous thing, though, because, like, you have to... Uh, I might have to, like, expand the fish barn or something. I might run out of tanks. Yeah, Chad, fishy bingo. So, how? So yes, I'll tell Chad, I'll tell you how it worked. So, basically, uh, what you did with fishy bingo um, is you get, you, you donate some bags of fish. And you'd really do, uh, um, so you, so I donated, like, two bags of fish. And uh, I bought I bought a a, uh, a couple bingo cards as well. I think they were like four bucks a piece. 
and then you just go through and uh, you know you play bingo and once you get your bingo you can go up and grab a bet you can pick a bag of fish um, Lumpy Dog I do think the auction is in mid-February so I think the Cichlid Club does one on February 9th and then the Motor City Club does theirs on the 16th so it's kind of a I found that interesting like, like why don't you guys do them like together so the one I went to before um, it was the uh, Motor City Aquarium Society, and they did theirs, and there, and it was like tons of cichlids. So, so I'm gonna take some stuff to that auction. Um, I am gonna take some. Yeah, I have a more purple ACI than you can uh, shake a stick at, and then hopefully some of my guppies will be um, that I got from Kingley will be in good shape too. I may take a few of those. Um. Yeah, and I may head to Grand Rapids, too. Um, I think I am going to try to go to that swap uh, they're having out in Grand Rapids. So, yeah, they have really good auctions here. But, I mean, it's kind of a dangerous thing, you know. I mean, you could, you got to kind of, like, be careful. Do um, so you guys have any more questions? Um, you, we can talk salt water. We can talk um, fresh water if you want to. Um, did anyone get anything over the holiday that was uh, um, that was exciting? Um, I did kind of make a, a New Year's Eve purchase. Um, you know, one of my goals when I was off over the holiday was to have a uh, was to have the fish room like set up and done, and then I went New Year's Eve and bought twelve more fish tanks, which kind of blew that out of the water. So. Uh, Michigan in general seems to like their fish tanks. Lots of clubs. Yes, I think the freshwater is pretty strong. Um, saltwater's gotten different. Um, and I almost did put a picture in here of like back in 2009, like the newspapers and all that stuff. Like I think 2009 changed the, the hobby forever. Uh, basically, kind of, you know, the auto companies were bankrupt and a lot of people left. Uh, a lot of people got out. And it really changed the dynamic. Um, and, um, you know, the Saltwater Club now here, um, at least the um, uh, the Masm Club, I mean, it's, it, its focus now is really captive breeding. It's not your typical reef club. Um, and I think that all changed really. Um, we used to do an annual conference. Um, at, what, at the time, point in time, it was the longest-running uh, conference in, uh, in North America. But it, we... We had to let it go because we would have speakers, and then you know you spend five hundred dollars five hundred dollars a piece to bring in four speakers, and no one goes to them, and they, everyone wants to go to the swap, and it kind of doesn't work. So, so anyone uh, uh anyone else have any questions? Um, I'd be happy to answer whatever you guys want. Fishy bingo. Oh, yeah, so answered um, answered fishy bingo. Uh, let me see if I make sure I didn't miss anyone. Centralized air system overbuilt, but now I have too much air. I need to set up more tanks. I use Jeremy at Sergeant Tanks method with the Rainbow Grip hose. Works great. Yes, I should have. Re I should research that. Um, I did it kind of like, I guess I'll call it the Ted Judy way with the um, central air system going uh, with the PVC pipe. Um, and I have two big, two air pumps. Oh, bummer, need more tanks. Yeah. Uh, okay, I wish we had fish clubs here. The only one I know of is the swap meet twice a year. Um, it's, ha it's hard. I mean... It you have to lay off the right population for it. Um, the Saltwater Club used to have month, monthly meetings too, but now we do our once a year fish breeding conference, and that's kind of what we do. And it's a uh, sort of a fun, you know, you know, that's kind of like how the club evolved. Um, so, yeah, Candy's gonna start one um, in Montana. So.
So uh, Terry's like run a bleeder valve to run off the excess air on a linear piston, piston pump. Yeah, I had one. Like I seem to have enough, you know, enough air on mine. Um, I actually thought one of my pumps was uh, kind of dying, and then uh, I realized that the the piece piece of PVC had worked itself out, and uh, so I had to jam it back together, and now it's working fine again. So I was thought I was gonna have to like rebuild it or something. It wasn't that old. I was like, oh. Um, do you guys have any questions on the fish barn itself? Um, I did post a little bit of an update on Joel's stream um, in his Patreon. So, I did do that. Um, a little bit kind of like the live stream. Uh, some people were worried about the amount of tanks here. Um, so, uh, everything seems to be fine. I do check the floor out pretty regularly. Uh, one thing I did notice um, is that instead of having like, I thought they were like 2x10s, um, I actually have 2 by like 3 by 8s or something. So, uh, Reels Tanks is here. Hi, welcome to the stream. So, so yeah, we've been going for 53 minutes. I can go probably for another 10-15 if you guys have questions. Uh, it's really up to you guys. I can go through uh, as long as you guys want. So, uh, Reels, just so you know, the pictures behind me are um, like some of my old systems of the past. So, some of the various things that, uh, that I've built over the years. Actually, kind of the uh, one of the revelations I've had, and I want to thank Joel... Uh, from Corvus Oskin for this is the um, is the Spaflex. Um, so this has been kind of a, uh, a godsend. It makes life a lot easier. Um, do I have a goal for the fish barn this year? Um, my one goal is actually to build it and not change it. That's, that's really my goal is to finish it and kind of get it in maintenance mode. That's my one goal. And then um, I do want to do some breeding out here. And um, that's kind of really the goal. Like, you know, I want to get some more. Um, when I go through the MBI, uh, uh, when I take, go through the MBI site, um, and I'm, I'm thinking that'll be soon, uh, they were doing a lot of major upgrades to it. So I didn't want to go through it and then have it be different. So um, I want to finish the uh, clownfish breeding stuff. Right, um, right now, I, you know, I've been losing them a so I'm going to try a different method. Um, I will document that. Um, yeah, so Chad said... Um, oh, that's probably about starting a, uh, a club. Yeah, I, I bet you it is a slow go. I mean, if we wanted to rebuild the Saltwater Club back up, it would be, you know, the four of us that kind of run it and, like, one other person. So... So yeah, it's uh, it's a tough haul for sure. Honestly, I think it's a lot like starting a YouTube channel. Um, so it's a lot like that. So I think I've got to mute my. Yeah, so that's what I'm kind of thinking. Um, let me see. Any other goals for the fish barn? Um, it's kind of simple. A, don't have it fall over. B, don't let it burn down. Um, that's really about it. Don't flood it out. You know, I, I have flooded it, but not too bad yet. Um, yeah, one of my main goals, um, kind of a, you know, is to, to really get good at keeping butterfly fish. So, it's been, you know, like, I've always loved them, and I've always killed them. So, the two that I have right now are doing really well. Um, unfortunately, I do have a little bit of an outbreak of lymphocystis. Uh, one of the angelfish I have, uh, the Venustus, has it. It's not terrible, but it's not good either. Um, so, I've been doing a, uh, we just lost our light. I forgot to turn the light on. 
So, uh, and then there's my dad. There's a whole lot of men. Let me do that. All right. Yeah, so that's the uh, Apex. Let me go turn the light back on so you guys can see me. Uh, Lumpy Dog looks like he's taken off. Uh, good night, Lumpy Dog. Yeah, so we have light again. So, yeah, it is getting to be about uh, 10 o'clock here. Uh, working on it's real tanks working on a new rat. Yes. Um, Chad Crotz is in and out of people's uh, homes. Small fraction of people you see with fish tanks. Yes. Um, yeah, I think there's more than you think. Um, I think a lot of the hobby, it's like, you know, people buy them for their kids or, you know, they have them and they just go to the fish store and do their thing. You know, aren't in forums or YouTube or Facebook groups or anything like that. I found that really to be the case with uh, saltwater. Because, uh, you know, I, I've met people they are like, Yep, I just go to the fish store, buy my fish, do my thing, don't read anything, just talk to the fish store, and that's it. So, I think you lose the sense of community like that, though. And uh, you can learn a lot of things from a lot of different people. So, you know, you can go visit someone's fish room. Um, you know, this, you know, the story of kind of a, a lot of how this all started um, was going to see the, um, there's a gentleman, um, I'll probably have him on. Um, he, uh, um, he was kind of the first clownfish breeder and he's the one that puts together, um, the uh, marine breeding initiative. And we really talked about, you know, and I went to his fish room and I'm like, there'd be, there's no bleeping way I'm going to do this. And then now I have a barn. Um, Chad Kratz, it feels like an insurmountable hill to climb to start a meaningful fish club here. Yeah, I don't know where you're at, Chad, but um, I think a lot of it depends on the uh, on the uh, population. Long Island fish guy, that's nice. So yeah, that's the old 180 gallon reef tank. Um, you gotta start start a salt tank too soon. Yeah, um, depends which what kind of tank you're looking to keep. It can be easier or harder depending on what it is. Um, I like fish only tanks. Because uh, there's some of the things I like to keep don't necessarily mix well with corals. But um, I am kind of getting a little bit of a bug to do a reef tank again. So. Um, let's see. So. Um, does anyone else here actually have a, re a, salt, a reef tank or a, um, a fowler? So, yeah, Candy, interest has been shown for a club. So, yeah, for sure, that's a good thing. So, if you have some interested people, you at least kind of have a core uh, to start with. Like, if you don't have a core, it's, it's you're really, really fighting it. So... Uh, real tanks, all fresh water. Yeah, that's perfectly, uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, I think one of the myths out there too is everyone thinks salt water is so much harder. Yeah, and it's really not. It's a lot of the same stuff, um, and you have to test a little bit, a few more things. I mean, I, and I'll be, this is, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't test salinity very often at all. I mean, the fish are more tolerant than you think. The corals. Um, not so much. So that's where they get, you know, a little bit, we'll call it persnickety, I guess. You know, you got to keep it around, you know, pretty close to the 1.026. Yeah, 
Yeah, candy, I agree. Salt's no harder. You just have to mix salt. And I honestly, what I do with the salt, I have a 55 gallon drum, and I get the 50 pound bag, or the uh, 50 gallon bags. And for fish only, that works out fine. I do test it occasionally, make sure I'm not too far off. Yeah, so I'm not running them at like hypo salinity or anything crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, they, you know, my buddy who would, was breeding clownfish, he had them at 1.020. And that's where he kept it. It's cheaper on salt. That's the one thing I think people um, in freshwater don't realize is that, you know, water changes in salt cost money. Um, you know, a bag of salt is 15 bucks for like the 50 the uh, 50 gallon bag. So that gets uh that gets kind of expensive. So So, yeah, I still you know, since this picture is up right now, I do want to get the uh you know, the two the two big angelfish again. I really enjoyed that. Um, I think I might even get that same combination. Um, I actually introduced those two angelfish together. Uh, real, I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, it's all right, for sure. Um, salt water does cost money, for sure. And like I said, it depends what you want to do, right? Like anything, like if you want, if you just want a fish only tank in a 29 gallon, you can do that fairly cheap. That emperor is my holy grail saltwater fish. Um, emperor is close. My um, my holy grail saltwater fish is something called a larvatus butterfly, and I found one one time, and it actually was it actually was eating because they're very difficult to get to eat because they only eat corals, or it was at least picking at clams, which was uh, like a winner. And unfortunately, we had a power outage and ended up losing it. And that was like the only fish. I lost those, or I lost that fish, and I lost Cardinal Tetras. And those are the only two in the uh, whole fish room. Those are the only uh, fish that died. And my tanks got into the 60s. Like, the clownfish are fine. You know, all the other fish were fine. The discus were pissed off, but fine. But the Cardinal Tetras were death spiraling, and the, the butterfly fish were he lasted quite a while though. He hung in there for a good. It was a four-day power outage, so these used to are substitute for a fish. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at too. Like you know, I kind of had a schedule of, um, you know, like I'd watch Joel and then uh, you know watch Corey and then I'll watch Jeffro and whoever you know. Just I always have one on. Um, YouTube for me has kind of become replacement for TV. Um, it's always good to hang out and talk with it. Yeah, I mean, you learn a lot of new stuff. I mean, you watch various people, you know, various things. You know, and I, you know, and I really enjoyed Corey's fact versus opinion live stream because I think that there's a lot of truth to that. Where if you sit there, you know, there are very few things that are fact. Like, you know, there's not a lot in either saltwater or freshwater that is a scientifically measured thing. Um, you know, other than like salinity, you know, calcium, magnesium, those sort of things are, are facts. But putting, you know, you know, putting an emperor angelfish with corals is supposed to be, you know, someone's opinion is you shouldn't do that, but there's a lot of people who do. And um, come to find out, uh, there's a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, but there's um, there was a talk out there for a while on the uh, on the circuit um, by a gentleman named John Coppolino, who's like the angelfish king. And um, basically what he had found is that um, things like angelfish will eat dying corals, but if your corals are healthy, they won't eat them. That was kind of his conclusion. So... You know, you have to do it, and, you know, I think I said this earlier in the stream, but you, you really have to push the boundaries of people, what people say you can't do, 
to kind of move the hobby forward or else it'll be stagnant. That's just my opinion. I mean, that's why I'm doing colony breeding cichlids. Um, that's why, you know, I wanted to kind of push that boundary. It's like, you know, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. But I want to see if it works. You know, it's, I mean, that's not groundbreaking, I don't think. But, um, yeah, I was actually waiting for the um, angry cichlid comments to start flowing in when, like, literally, like, hey, um, you can't do that. I'm like, well, there's eight zillion in Buna sitting in there. I guess I can. But who knows? I, I want to try that with some other species, too. Um, stuff like the zebra of liquid and stuff and see what that's got uh, going on. So uh, we're going for about an hour and seven minutes. So I'm kind of running out of gas. Um, I got to pick up some stuff in here. Um, tomorrow's trash day. So, you know, that's kind of when I try to pick up some of the things that, that I've made a mess of in here. So, that being said, if you um, you guys have any last questions, um, if not, I think we'll go ahead and we'll call it a night. So, uh, yep, you guys are welcome for the stream. Uh, we do stream every Tuesday. So, um, every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. So, um, enjoyed having you guys all out here. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed it. So uh, I'll have to come up with a topic for next week. Uh, one thing I think um, there's going to be a couple of videos coming out Thursday, and uh, there'll be a video coming out Thursday and a uh, another video Sunday. And I haven't decided which video will be coming out yet, so it'll be kind of a surprise, I guess. So uh, with that being said, I will talk to you guys later, and I will see you on uh, the next stream or the next video. And uh, have a good night.